Molly Crab, Apple's contributor for BuzzFeed and contributing editor at Vice, just got back from Puerto Rico and joins me now. Um, it's good to have you here. I know um, your, your dad's from the island. You have friends there. You got outside San Juan. Where were you? I was in Barrio Mariana, which is a small village in the municipality of Umacao, which is the first place on uh, the island that the hurricane hit. And what was, uh, how, how much federal presence did you see there in terms of military or FEMA or federal officials? I personally saw zero presence. When I was there, the only aid that people in Mariana had received was a municipal truck that gave people two small bottles of water, a pack of tropical flavored Skittles, a Nutrigrain bar, and a pack of uh, Virginia sausages. I do know that the military and the FBI uh, came about uh, three weeks into, after the hurricane and they did distribute MREs and water. But um, yeah, that was pretty much it. And, and in terms of how people were living their lives there, um, I'm assuming there was no electricity. None. Um, and how were people going, how were people getting the basics, which is water, electricity, and food? Some people had generators, but if you have a generator, uh, your life becomes an endless wait on uh, six hour lines for diesel. To get water, you either waited for hours and hours at Costco uh, using your scarce reserves of gasoline, or you went to a creek on the side of a mountain and you collected it in a jug. So people were just like getting rainwater off a creek. Uh, yeah, they, or the or spring water off right. the creek. That, that's what that's what I did, and then we would I, I brought a filter and we would purify it. But uh, this is very dangerous because disease is spreading on on the island because there were all of these animal corpses that were left to rot, and it's getting into the water. So I mean, how it sounds to me like a non-functional situation. So you're it's like it sounds like what's happening is people's days are taken up with the basics of the survival. There's nothing. No one's going to work or doing the things that you would normally do, right? Exactly. Communication is so bad that even pharmaceutical companies, which are the biggest industries there, are calling into the one radio station to tell uh, their workers whether or not they should come to work. So people, they, uh, most people don't have uh, the ability to get to their jobs. Um, their credit cards don't work. Their EBT cards don't work. Uh, it's huge lines to access the ATM, and you have $200 maximum, and you know that cash will run out. So it's the struggle for survival. But the thing about Puerto Ricans is that this is a very, very close-knit culture. This is a culture of family. It's a culture of friends. It's a culture of barrios, of neighborhoods. And so people are taking care of each other. It's not the federal government that's taking care of people, and it's not FEMA. It's people taking care of each other. In uh, Barrio Mariana, uh, the couple that I stayed with, uh, Christine Nieves and uh, Luis Rodriguez Sanchez, actually set up a community kitchen that's currently feeding hundreds of people. And uh, these community kitchens uh, are happening all over the island as people uh, give up on uh, help from FEMA and decide to take uh, caring for themselves and their neighbors in, into their own hands. Um, how aware were people of the sort of the, the president's comments, the president's perspective towards Puerto Rico? What were the feelings about the federal government and, and its involvement? One uh, older woman I spoke to said, oh, Trump came to the richest town in Puerto Rico and uh, threw toilet paper at people's heads. He's trying to humiliate us. In general, it's viewed as an extension of the same sort of uh, racist, colonialist, and stereotypical thinking that America has had for Puerto Rico since it colonized it in 1898. Um, do you think, um, do, do folks have hope that things are going to change in the short term, or is there this sense that this adjustments we've made to just eke out survival, which is food, you know, food, water, electricity, diesel, that that is going to be the, the sort of status quo for a while? Some people uh, have accepted that that will be the status quo for a while and are trying to build on it with these community efforts. Other people are just sort of hanging on. Uh, one woman that I met, her mother, uh, who has Alzheimer's and dementia and can't speak, was uh, she was kicked out of her nursing home because there was no electricity and doesn't have access to medicine. And uh, you know, some and she's trying to keep her mother alive in this crushing heat with no access to clean water. Someone like that needs, you know, help as soon as possible. They can't just adjust. All right, Molly Crabapple, thank you for your reporting. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, sir. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.